Oh, hello. Welcome to another video. Uh, and this is just basically a short update to the hobby products video that I did a little while ago, uh, where I'm going to talk about two more products that I've started using and my initial, uh, and these are only initial impressions of having used them just on a couple of miniatures now. So Tamiya Extra Thin Cement is something that I have wanted to try for a long time. Uh, it's widely regarded as being the best um, plastic glue that you can get. So just to share some thoughts that I have, it's a brush on glue and the brush gives you a lot more control than the, the Rever Contactor kind of metal nose as to how much glue you're going to put on the model because you're not trying to gauge. It can get quite tricky um, with the Revel glue, especially once they get kind of past half empty. You have to squeeze reasonably hard to get any glue to come out at all. Uh, with the brush, you know exactly how much glue you're putting on. It is actually quite a joy to use on, on miniatures. Um, you can do some tricks with it that you can't do with uh, the, the Revel Contactor. So you can actually, rather than applying glue to one of the surfaces and holding them together, you can actually uh, quite a lot of the time hold two pieces together and just run the glue into the seam. And it's thin enough that it will just sort of suck into that seam um, and, and you can set the piece that way. Which means that you no longer have that situation where you accidentally apply a little bit too much glue and you push two pieces together and you get glue that kind of pushes out around the joint and can just slightly mar the surface of the model. And also, because you're using a lot less glue, um, the bottle that I've got here I think is going to probably last for a very long time. Um, you know, you're going to get loads of models from one bottle and so I think it's probably very good value for money. And, um, you know, your models aren't taking as long to dry as well, which is really good. Now, there's a negative there, I suppose, because some people really like the, uh, with, with Revel, you get quite a lot of uh, work time. So if you're trying to fit one of those classic miniatures where you've got two hands holding a gun. So you've got three points of contact, right? You've got the two shoulders and the, uh, the hand on the gun. They can be quite tricky. And so sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of wiggle time where the, the shoulders are held onto the model, but you can still move them quite easily. And I get the feeling that maybe you'd have a little bit less wiggle time with the Tamiya. But on the other hand, I have had the opposite problem where you glue something like that and then you put the model to one side and as you put it to one side, the arms start to droop down under the weight of the gun. So overall, I much prefer working with this Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. What I did notice though is another minor negative is it doesn't give you a particularly good bond between the, the on a games workshop miniature between the feet of the miniature and the black plastic base so i found myself swapping back over to the revel glue to glue the feet to the base and i kind of think that if i was building something like terrain or like a lehman rust tank or something like that there's probably certain joints especially like internal joins where i'm joining two quite heavy thick pieces where i might want to swap back to using a thicker glue now tamiya do make a less thin version of this glue in the same pot and maybe when I run out of because obviously I've got half a bottle still of Revel Contactor maybe when I run out of that I'll have a look at their the non extra thin the kind of regular cement that they do which maybe for the jobs of gluing things onto miniatures yeah, is something that you want to do now it's up to you how much you want to um, have like hobby tool bloat both this and the um, the next thing I'm going to talk about don't replace as I've just said, they don't replace the thing you're already using. It's kind of an extra thing, which I think is better in a lot of situations. But you're still wanting to fall back on the thing you were using before as well. In the same vein with the Monument Hobby Seam Scraper. So this, it looks superficially similar to, um, you know, a sculpting tool or a sort of dentistry tool that I've spoken about before. But what it has at either end are two curved and then slightly sharp surfaces. And it's very good for removing mould lines um, and other sort of slight imperfections on the surface of a miniature. Not quite so good for removing quite chunky gates that you can get where you've snipped the part off the sprue. I'd still want to use a scalpel blade, whether that's um, like a, an X-Acto blade or like a Swan Morton for removing those. But the nice thing about the seam scraper is when you're removing something quite small, you can just drag it across and it scrapes that bit off without the risk of making a little divot in 
the armour because I find sometimes with the scalpel, if you're trying to get something quite fine, sometimes you can end up with a little a little dimple on a curved surface where you've taken away slightly too much material. And it's not one of those things that other people would notice, but when you paint the miniature, you notice it and um, it bothers me. Now, I know that some people will be absolute masters at using their scalpel blade and therefore won't need something like this but if you ever found yourself in that situation where when you scrape away a mold line or something with a scalpel blade you just accidentally remove a tiny amount more material than you meant to this um seam scraper can be a really good safety net for that but as such it is an additional tool right it is something you're going to have to add it's not going to replace your hobby knife what i will say is it's far and away uh, better than the citadel mold line scraping tool i've had one of those not the current one that they sell but i've certainly had the previous one they made um they look pretty similar they've got kind of a strange shape to them warlord make a really similar shaped thing i think the army paints are making a really similar shaped thing this is totally different to that product and i think is much better there's something about the angle of the curved surfaces on either end that makes it much easier to use so recommended if you like that kind of thing i can also say that if you um have a younger child uh, who is interested in in warhammer and you obviously don't want to let them loose with um a scalpel type blade or a sort of a box cutter or a, a stanley knife or similar it can be a good alternative to that because it's slightly sharp if you really press your finger into the end of it you can hurt yourself but you're not going to accidentally break the skin with this tool so it can be something to sit alongside the clippers where, um, you know, a younger uh, 11 or 12 year old could use it. I mean, I run a Warhammer club at school, teacher, I have year sevens, year eights go to the club. I wouldn't let them use, um, you know, an actual knife knife, but I wouldn't worry about letting them use something like this. So that's another uh, point to commend it. I'm pleased that I bought one. I think it was a reasonable investment, but obviously your mileage may vary. If you are someone who's very, very proficient using your scalpel blade, then you're probably just going to stick with that. And that's really it today so i just wanted to add in those extra two um i'd be very curious to know if you've got any more recommendations anything else that you use uh, not really the game i'm not really interested in reviewing the games workshop stuff i think we use that as our baseline as i said in the previous video i use mostly games workshop stuff most of the time what i'm interested in is paint and hobby supplies that maybe people that shop mainly at a warhammer store haven't heard of and something that you really enhances the experience of building or painting the miniatures i'm going to do a plug i don't do this every video there's an element games link in the description of the video um which is i get a slight kickback from that i get a little alpha uh, a little bit of money back from that um if you use that um that's really good of you but in particular for this video the monument hobby seam scraper in the uk element games is the only place that you're going to find to buy monument hobbies stuff because they've they are the importer for the uk from monument hobbies which is an american company obviously if you're over in the states you can buy from them directly or possibly from a your local hobby store i don't know but uh, in the uk element games is the place you kind of have to go to get um monument hobbies stuff the tamiya extra thin cement you can get from element games you can get from amazon you can get that basically anywhere that model kits are sold um the next hobby supply that i'm tempted to pick up is i've never used micro sol and micro set which people rave about for the easy application of um transfers not to divide the room but do you call them transfers or decals uh tell me in the comments are they transfers or decals anyway um i've never used it i've always just used water and i've not ever had a massive problem but it could be one of those things where until you try it you don't know how much better the experience could be so i'm thinking of ordering some of that um and when i do i'll do you a review uh, other than that i think that's it from me today i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you have a really good rest of your day bye now